Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Paula Bartholomew, and I'm just delighted that you've turned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni series. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing our graduate, Karen Roth, and we're going to talk for about 30 minutes, and then you'll have the opportunity to ask you, uh, Karen, your questions directly. Always a very fine feature about these All About Alumni. And Karen, hello and welcome. Hello, thank you. Glad you to be I'm here. Really, yeah, I'm really excited to be here together, too. It's been a while. Nice to have you on air. So it'll be my pleasure to introduce you, um, as well as your presentation, Growing and Restarting Your Holistic Nutrition Practice. There are no mistakes, only learning. So Karen's going to share her adventures of establishing herself and a new practice, um, gaining success, and then needing to recreate the business after moving to a new location. She's going to talk about the steps she's taken, the continuing education and networking, self-promotion, and public speaking, that all of these things that have supported her along the way. Karen holds a Master's of Science degree in Holistic Nutrition from Hawthorne University, and she earned her undergraduate degree from UC Irvine. Um, she's a nutrition consultant, author, speaker, blogger, and former radio host who recently located to San Diego. Karen's a believer that every ill health condition can benefit and possibly improve with a solid foundation of healthy food choices. She shares her in-depth knowledge of nutrition to empower her clients to take control of their health, thereby improving the quality of their life. That's a pretty powerful mission statement, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. I'm ready to share my information. All right. I'm, I'm wondering if you want to start out about um, the, the training that you've done, certainly Hawthorne's training, but um, other things that have done to, to pull all of your skills together into the package that you're offering now. Is that a good place for you to start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I find it, you'll see some of the, uh, on this slide, that of course I started with Hawthorne. Um, and I, at the time, was working a different type of job and just wanted a change of life, change of career, and uh, signed up with Paul Thorne. After graduation, um, I've continued learning. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to go to expos where I learn about new foods, new products, that uh, especially dealing with some clients that might have food sensitivities. Uh, Natural Products Expo is huge, and there's one on the East Coast as well. Um, I've done some um, studying with the Blood Chemistry University. That's all online, and it's a really great tool that I have. Um, Healthy Living Festival here in San Diego uh, comes around once a year. And then uh, right, out, right after graduation, I, or before graduation, what I did my thesis on was discover your menopause type, and that was an online course. Um, I do not believe it's it's offered anymore. Um, Dr. Collins has since retired. And then, um, like little field trips, the Cancer Control Society, they go down to Tijuana and introduce you to clinics that are curing cancer. So um, there's always seems to be something that you can do to learn more. Um, what I found when I first started my business, though, is that I wanted a niche. I really felt like... Um, I had to come out of the gates with something that um, I could focus on so I wouldn't feel so scattered. So um, after doing the Your Menopause Type um, seminar and training, um, that's what I led with. So started doing saliva testing, targeting uh, specific groups, mainly women in menopause. And um, it has since grown into dealing with other hormonal issues like PCOS, but this is exactly what I started with, and this is the only thing I did when I when I graduated Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. And then that allowed me just to focus on certain groups. So I would go to like maybe curves or find women's organizations where I could do some speaking and talk about hormone testing. Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning, um, I did a lot of speaking. Um, I spoke at Whole Foods. I did various company lunch and learns. Um, I actually taught a class at the YMCA. Um, I would speak at high schools and even the Holistic Moms group. And um, we'll come back to this Western Regional Geriatric Management. That was a, something that I, I got as a part of networking. And the other way I grew my business was with paid advertising. 
And where I lived in Los Angeles was a community of about 85,000 homes, and it was called Santa Clarita. Mm -hmm. And they had this nice magazine that was delivered to people's, everybody's home once a month. And mm -hmm. so I'd spend about 300 a month on this, and I'd take out a quarter-paged ad, and then I'd get to write an article. And um, this proved to be very, um, it, it really brought clients in every month. So it paid for itself and then some. Great. Um, I also, um, I also spoke at um, local country clubs. Um, I also, like you mentioned that I was on a radio show um, as a co-host. That was something I actually paid to do. It cost me like $50, I think, to, to be on the show, but it gave me good, good um, experience. And even though it was just a local radio show, we did have some listeners. So uh, that gave me some really good experience. Uh, I really enjoy doing radio. Was it commercial radio? It was a local radio station just in the Santa Clarita area, KHTS. It was an AM station. Yes, okay. Yeah. So yeah, commercial radio versus a, um, a, a private private radio. Like, yeah, like radio. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, it's, you know, doing radio is fabulous, and, and it's, it's surprising me that you had to pay to, to do it. Usually they're seeking experts to speak on various subjects like this so but I, you know I love radio too I think it's a, a great medium to be able to um, get a message out to get yourself known um, did you notice that after you were on the radio if you were around town that people would say hey I heard you <laughs> you know sometimes yes um, but I'll be honest with you because of my YouTube channel people recognized me more so yeah. and and even this advertising that people would see I've had an ad every month in this magazine so people got to know me yes just through this and you're right most radio stations do want uh, to have guests on and they're free but since this was such a small little radio station the people who wanted their own shows had to pay for their show I see okay that makes sense and no you you know you're right it's um, I've seen in terms of the consistency and in, in advertising having your 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 message out your picture out having an ad in in something um, you know whether you get hits on it every single month I think it's it, it's still recognized um, both by other professionals I've always you know anytime that I get my magazines and newsletters like this I'm always looking so I see who is, uh, you know, who's got an ad consistently. And I notice if they change it or if, they, if they're gone for a while, if they're just gone. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it has a lot of unseen and, and maybe unheard benefits of the just the consistency for it. And so that followed up with some airtime must have been really helpful for you. Yes, absolutely. And then once you, you've you kind of got your foot in the door and, and you, you start to get notice, you can actually reach out for free advertising. So like our, our uh, newspaper, um, once a month, would have this health and wellness insert. Mm -hmm. And so I just reached out to the newspaper and asked if I could, you know, be on their list to call. So like they had this one was about better bones. And so I contributed to the author's story about mm -hmm. talking about calcium supplements. Um, uh, <clears throat> I also got to uh, got interviewed in uh, US Today men's health section and then this picture here is a picture of me and my husband at our local hometown um, newspaper when I went back for my high school reunion um, we reached out to the local paper and funny story here um, this young girl who was new she interviewed us and everything and we stopped to get the paper that Sunday and we could not find our article and we thought we'd been scratched Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then what well, I didn't even think they had us on the front cover of the ad. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look that way. I didn't look on the front. I was flipping through trying to find the article and um, because of this the uh, local bookstore bought some of my books just to put on as a local author. So that was um, that was fun. <laughs> sure. One thing leads to the next, you know, and it shows you people are paying attention. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. 
Um, the other thing I did a lot was get up on my uh, social media. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just think the more that you're online, I see 90% of the calls I get, people don't even know really where they saw me, but they've Googled. So that Google either takes them to, to uh, my YouTube channel, maybe my LinkedIn page, maybe my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I made sure that I, I'll show you my different pages because I think it is important to have an online presence just because that's how people are shopping around now. Right. Yes. Um, they are shopping for sure. Exactly. Um, this is some of the media that I got just by being um, either online and people reaching out to me. Um, we went on the local TV uh, show, the SCV TV show. So if you're in a small town, this is a great way to get your name out. Look up your local radio stations, your local TV stations, your local newspapers, and just be a resource for them. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody Googled nutritious Santa Clarita, and, and that top right um, picture of me, that was a new segment they were doing about Greek yogurt. And yeah. they just said, you know, you know, can you do can you come in for this? Um, new segment um, and let me see blogging oh yes go ahead no um w while you're in this section i'm I, I want you to emphasize a little bit more about your your youtube but you know going to blogging oh. next is fine yeah I, I my youtube is coming up okay <laughs> i think it is coming up um and maybe i didn't organize this real well but um Blogging is a way to keep just in front of your current clients and even having guest bloggers in case you get tired of blogging and you just want to, you know, to just constantly be in their face, not in their yeah. face, um, cr creating content for your own website too. <laughs> there you go. It's right, content, uh, lots of content. Um, I tried many, I taught, I tried blogging on many different things um, like ICU, Seaman SCV, AltMD. Most of these things aren't even online anymore. So um, it doesn't hurt to, you know, blog on other, other people's sites um, just as long as it doesn't take away from what you're building your content. And then, um, the other thing I did, I got involved in networking. I found that um, I, everything on the left is what I did right out of right out of leaving Hawthorne, and now I'm doing everything on the right. And it's just because these chapters over here on the left don't have chapters in San Diego where I live now. So mm -hmm. I had to start from scratch on networking. Mm -hmm. um, but so they they don't have a chamber of commerce or or um, um right. so there's, there's, there's a women's group here. This the Carlsbad luncheon seems like, but yes. Yeah, so um, our, the holistic chamber here in San Diego is is about ready to close up. There's no Team Women or HeartLink chapters here. Those really worked for me in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. um, and that was just, I got business from the ladies themselves and for referring. The thing about networking is to be consistent. Sure. Um, you, want, you want to build relationships. Sure. And um, so with the, so there, is there, so Holistic Chamber of Commerce is closing, but is there a Chamber of Commerce? There is. And, you know, I haven't, I, I went to the Chamber of Commerce when I was in Los Angeles and it was very, it was not for me. Uh -huh. It wasn't for my services. Um, I have not tried the chamber here in San Diego. Uh -huh. I found this Elevate uh, group of professional women, um, the Rancho Santa Fe business women, and the good old gals. These have been really, um, you see the same faces at all these, and it's great because you really sure. start, they start to know you. Sure. And great co-referrals happen in, in situations like that. They do, and that's so. This is, I'll show you on my next slide. These are some of the rewards I got. Um, first of all, new clients, either the ladies themselves yeah. um, were referring. Um, a lady that I met at a at a networking event. She is in she, her business is working with um, 
with uh, seniors at physical fitness. And she was she applied to speak at the geriatric management conference. And they asked her if she had any nutrition background or could she get a nutritionist to, to co-host with or co-speak with her. So this was a huge event that I got to, I got about five or six slides out of the presentation. And yeah, and based on networking, this new use salon wanted a nutritionist in their salon. So I opened a second office in the Valley mm -hmm. and she gave me space and she gave me space just on a, you can, um, you know, give me a percentage of what you make when you see clients. Yeah, that's good. So you're not bound to, yeah, so you can have a few clients or a lot of clients and it, and it works both ways. You're not under pressure for paying something that you might not be able to fill yet right in the beginning. Exactly. So um, they, these rewards don't come, you know, immediately, but they do come. Do you know uh, if there's a, a seroptimist seropt group in the area? I don't know. I assume there may be. I'll look. It's another. It's another good avenue uh, of for for promoting, self-promoting, getting yourself known in in certain circles. You know, they're the business women um, of the communities, and they're looking for ways to support each other, support themselves. So it's another avenue you might want to check out. Okay, I will check that out. Um. The other thing that I did to really build my business was leveraging my current clients. I give a referral fee. Um, if someone refers somebody to me, I give them $25, rather either a credit towards their next appointment, their supplements, or if they're no longer working with me, I will give them a $25 gift certificate to their favorite grocery store. Mm -hmm. And this has, this, has been, this has been really nice. This has been really helpful. People like generosity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do. They do. Well, of okay. these um, all, all these promotional um, ways that you go about putting yourself out there in your business, have you seen um, more success in, in some of the avenues than others? In Los Angeles, the advertising I did in my local community was by far the best money spent. Mm -hmm. um, here in San Diego, it's been three years, and I'm thinking that what's working mostly for me here is the networking and also health profs. Um, that's an online service where people can go and, or you, you can um, put your profile on there, and then people search that database for health services and all kinds of services. Right. And that, that did not work for me in Los Angeles. Um, it definitely works for me here in San Diego. Great. Interesting what works in one place and not another. Well, that's very true. The, you know, things I, I, I'll get into the, um, the differences between the two towns. So, um, yeah, this is just, uh, Yelp is another really great resource. If, if you can build your Yelp page out. Mm-hmm. And I have a Yelp page from my Los Angeles office that still lives on in eternity. So I get calls still from that area. And then I built a new one here in uh, San Diego. Well, do you work just um, on site in an office or do you also do um, um, online with Skype and um, FaceTime, et cetera, with clients? Yeah, I do phone, FaceTime, and Skype. And... Um, I work out of a work sharing space uh, here, which there's three locations. So I basically have three offices that I can go. And what I found out here in San Diego is that people will not drive more than 20 minutes to get somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and in Los Angeles, people expect to drive an hour anywhere. Okay. So this work sharing space has been another really great thing that's working for me because I can cover North County and in the Southern part of San Diego whereas I might not get any clients from North County if I did not have a space up there to work out of. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And do, do you get a um, good amount of your clientele online? Do, do people Are people attracted to doing Skype and FaceTime with you? They are now. I had to really tone, I had to really frame my tone because when I first moved, I was very defensive about like, well, I don't, have offices there anymore but we can do it on the phone or we can do Skype and then so here's what I now do I just tell people if they say well are you in Santa Clarita or did you move to San Diego 
and I'll say, well, I moved to San Diego, but 90% of my clients are still in the Los Angeles area just because I worked up there for so long and I had a good presence. And then as I start talking to people, they then, then it's just like, it's like, it doesn't even matter to them that they can't come into your office. Right. That, they know they can do it over the phone and so exactly it, I think it's so much about your attitude and the way you promote it it's like but I have this you know I can yeah we can do it anytime right here you don't have to drive it's so right. convenient we're still face to face um, exactly yeah no it, it, it's fabulous for um, being able to have a broader outreach but still cover your needs I mean we're seeing the medical profession move into this the more online um, nursing and doctoring so exactly yeah, I had to get over myself. That's what it was. <laughs> you have to get over yourself and, and, and be encouraging to others because if you think, well, you know, I can offer you this this watered down version of seeing me, then mm -hmm. they're like, I don't know so much. And it's like, hey, you know, we can meet online. <laughs> it's so much better. <laughs> And, you know, seriously, my younger clients here in San Diego, um, they, they still do FaceTime. I mean, they, they don't want to drive anywhere. Right. So, and even though they could, but they don't. So I just wanted to go through some of my social media so you can see okay. what I've done. Um, this is my Facebook business page. Mm -hmm. I, I use this basically to post my articles. So whenever I do a blog, it goes to Facebook, it, it'll go to Twitter, I'll put it on my LinkedIn page. Um, I will, I'll put things on here like, um, you know, news, like the, you know, um, maybe a new product that I found or maybe a new study that came out that uh, is making claims that are false and thing. And I, I have about um, 1100 followers on here. Mm -hmm. And then um, my YouTube channel, this is my YouTube channel. Um, you can barely see down at the bottom what to watch next. This was here in San Diego, a, um, a marketing director Googled nutritionist San Diego and found my YouTube channel and they needed a nutritionist to go on the local uh, Channel 6 News to talk about popcorn and it was during the holidays. And so I got I got this um, thing just from my YouTube channel and if you do get into doing your YouTube channel and you monetize these, I actually make money off my videos now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't I don't make a lot but you know about every quarter I make about two hundred dollars okay so monetizing these um, can you speak to that just a little bit about how, how you go about earning money from doing your videos so when you upload your video it'll ask do you want to monetize it and that just means that they'll run commercials on your video and everybody who clicks on that commercial or watches it past a few seconds you make you make um, you make I forget how much maybe a quarter a click or something like that mm -hmm. um, it's been so long since I set up this and I have actually I haven't done a video in quite a while but I still get you know I still get views my channel has over a million views and so um, YouTube is second only to Google being the most searched engine right and so because they're owned by each other, this also pulls me up in the rankings. Uh -huh. Now, very interesting that um, well, just the number of hits that you get and and the different avenues for doing this. And uh, you know, it's it, it's also curious that um, I didn't know. I, I didn't know why there's an ad on top of something that I'm going to search and it's going to give me a little different of an opinion now if I'm going to your channel and I and I I'm not going to be so annoyed to have to sit through an ad because I know you're going to get a quarter for it <laughs> <laughs> exactly and it and it does add up <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to know that Karen <laughs> and, and I have to tell you I think my mom sits at home and does that <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good mom that's right that's what she should be doing um, I also have a profile on LinkedIn this is just another avenue where you can post your article again people do read them uh, mm -hmm. people will search you out on LinkedIn so like um, whoops sorry about that um, a chef reached out to me through LinkedIn and we met up and we wanted to see how we could refer to each other yeah um, so that's that's another another area and Twitter 
Um, I honestly don't do much on Twitter. I just have the profile there. Um, I will uh, obviously post my my blog to here or a link to my blog, and then people will, will share it or retweet it. Um, it's just another place to be found. I'm not on Instagram, um, and I know some people are, um, but on Twitter with 3,100 followers, almost everybody, or not everybody, but almost every blog I put on here does get retweeted, so it's going out to other people's Twitter pages too. Okay. Um, so yeah, rewards of online presence. You get more clients, you get speaking opportunities, meeting opportunities, partnerships. Um, I had a lady reach out to me and her website is Peaceful Eater. And she wanted to know if I would um, write, you know, have her do a guest blog. And then uh, if anyone bought her program, uh, she would, I had an affiliation with her. So if anyone buys her program, I will make money off that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one, this is one of my favorite things that came out of online presence was a director of a movie called Endo What wanted to talk to a nutritionist and I had a significant, um, piece in this documentary and it's, it's, it continues to grow and it's shown all over the world. They go and do premieres of this all over the world. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, this was a great, this was a great, great opportunity. Um, so then I relocated and I didn't know where to start. We kind of talked about where, what part of town to focus on. And then I started understanding that San Diego is like a very small town in a big city. Mm -hmm. And that's how kind of people think. They don't want to drive far. They want to do business with people who they know. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, you have to build relationships very slowly here. Um, I did reach out and spoke at the local community center. Um, we have an organization called Oasis, which is for seniors. And right. I, I got to speak at, you know, speak in front of them. Um, I, one of the things I did was when I first got here is that I signed up to do health fairs and this is where you pay a chunk of money. And the company themselves, they go into, they, this organization goes into companies and puts on health fairs for their employees. Mm -hmm. And this did not work for me. It was a lot of money. And what I found was that um, they, they told me that, you, well, you can. You'll be able to look at the companies you're going to speak at, look at the demographics, what their common salaries are, so you'll yeah. know if, if these are people who have expendable income that could pay for your services. Sure. What, what I did learn, what I learned from doing these is that it doesn't matter how much money people make, you're going into a company and they have health insurance and they want to know, do you take my health insurance? Yes. And so this was, this was a big learning for me. Um, so insurance was, stopping, the insurance was a stopping block for you there. It's in, it's interesting because um, it, to me it seemed like an opportunity to get into corporate wellness. It's like you, you go to the fair and you're looking for one-on-one -on -one clients, but if you went back to the company and said, I've done this fair, I have a sense of, of, uh, uh, of your uh, um the kind of people that work for you and and their potential needs I think I could put together a program for you that that will support their health and um, be good for your business because they'll be healthier they'll have less time off they'll be more productive and happy with this and so then the corporation pays for it for their employees or it's, or it's a co-pay where their employees pay some and they pay for an, for the large chunk of it um, and so you get paid, they get supported, the, the company looks good. So it's another way to think about. And, and I and did, call, and I did uh, yeah, and I did make it a point to uh, hunt out the HR person mm -hmm. and, um, and, and exactly try to go that route. But what I found was most of these HR people are so overwhelmed that you know, they say they will get back to you and you do your follow up and then they, they don't return calls. And then it just got, it got, that got frustrating for me. Um, 
So I don't know. I mean, this, this, is, this is applying to me right here in San Diego. It could be totally different in another town. Okay. My my point is, is just try anything and everything and be consistent for a while to see what works and what won't work. Good. So what is working for me right now is the networking, the Hera Hub work sharing space where I, I rent office by the hour. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of uh, business lectures and things that I can uh, participate in. And I'm just getting to know a bunch of uh, great women who are entrepreneurs and we learn from each other. Um, uh, like I said, Health Profs right here, and Health Profs is a great online service that you can try for free. Um, they, I think they offer four to six months free, and then once your freebie is over, uh, it's like $30 a month, and I think that's a very fair price. Mm -hmm. uh, my blog, which I share all, all over social, me social media, that gets me, uh, it gets me in front of people. My Yelp pages, for sure. The key thing about Yelp is making sure you get reviews. Right. So the more reviews you have, the higher you you uh, rank in Google. Um, my YouTube channel, I actually hired someone to do my SEO for a little while, and that really, I mean, I only did it for like three months, but it really made the difference. Um, it is expensive to do search engine optimization, mm -hmm. um, but I saw I saw my ranking just move here in San Diego. I bet. Did, did, did you learn then from that? Is that something that you can do now or are you still reliant on somebody else from time to time? I don't know how to do it. I, um, and no, I wouldn't want to learn to do it. It's, it's a big job. Okay. Um, this is something I wanted to mention. SCORE Mentoring is nationwide and they are a resource for free mentoring. So it's run by something like 10,000 volunteers who have all started their own businesses. And you can go and speak with a mentor, ask them about how, you know, how to grow a business in your area. They offer really cheap classes. Like one I'm going to sign up for next week is um, social media for the busy entrepreneur. They have uh, classes uh, like, um, you know, how to build your YouTube channel, how to build your website. Um, how to market things like that and their classes are like 15 to 20 dollars and these right. are like three hour classes mm -hmm. so that that's a great resource and they have a lot of the library online a lot of free webinars too it's a great way to get to know your area excellent good yes. tip what has not worked for me was advertising I paid for Yelp advertising I paid for Facebook ads there's a website called Thumbtack where they send you, um, people go to Thumbtack wanting a nutritionist and then they'll send, Thumbtack will send you the lead and then you pay like $1.75 for each lead uh, to send your offer off to that person. And so I, I shut that down. I did that for about six months and it was just, it was just throwing money away. Okay. Um, Lo local golf or tennis club magazines that that seems like a great place to be because those people have expendable health, expendable income um, but I found that not to be any good because it caters mostly to men and honestly you know men don't care much about their health as much as women do um, and they're there to have fun they're there for their golf or their tennis mm -hmm. we talked about the business health fairs that didn't work and then um, I attended um, the New Earth Expo had a, had a table there are a lot of these little expos here in San Diego where you can get a table and so um, this particular one didn't work for me because it was more not much, so much help but more um, I want to say more uh, spiritual so people were there buying stones and getting card readings and things like that um, okay, we're almost through. Um, these are the current tools that I, I have found that is very helpful. Blood chemistry software that has added like another little uh, thing that I do for my clients. It, it's, it's something I pay for and I love this tool uh, because people get their blood work from their doctors and they, they, they don't discuss it with them. They don't uh, help them out with it. You're in, you're, you're in normal ranges or you're out of range. That's what, pretty much what you get, right? 
Yeah, and you're out of range. Uh, they don't tell you what to do about it. Right. Um, so somebody, you're not really interpreting as um, or, or diagnosing in any way. You're helping them understand their results. So you're totally within your scope of practice to do that. You're being educational. Exactly. Exactly. So they may see. They may some of their numbers may look like that. They're going towards being anemic. Well, um, the the doctor isn't going to say anything until they have become anemic. So I can tell them how to maybe you know stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. um, critical, critical to have a dependable website person. And anybody who wants to reach out to me, I have a great web person. She we actually work over email. I don't you know. I just need something. I email her. She fixes it for me. Okay. I mean, it's just great. It's I've been through. She's about my third web person, and I I don't know what I'm going to do if she ever retires. Uh, <laughs> and um, you tell her so, to fix that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would I would highly recommend that no matter where you are in your school, that you start documenting every time you do something, you speak somewhere, and create a curriculum vitae. Um, mine has gotten really extensive, and if anybody would like me to share it with them, I'd be happy to email it so you can see how. That's what somebody did for me, and so I knew how to, do, um, you know, format it. Um, Why don't you send it, Karen, and we'll post it um, as a handout with this, okay. um, with your um, PowerPoint. Oh, okay, great. I'll do that. Okay. Um, make sure you have a current headshot. Um, I've been, I've learned that you need to get a new headshot every three years. And uh, I went along, and this was a wake up. I was at one of those health fairs, and someone picked up my brochure, and he said, "Is that you?" <laughs> uh -huh. And I, uh -huh. I've got a thousand of those with my old picture on it. I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got lung. I got younger looking. <laughs> uh, and that's a lesson learned too. Don't ever get a thousand brochures because it's going to be cheaper. It's like they're still sitting in my garage. Uh, anyway, I still use my Esha food processor with every client that I had from from school. So that's your um, diet analysis software. Yeah, the diet analysis software. It's very eye opening when people get to see their graphs. Um, also, I do the hormone and saliva test, the Alcat food sensitivity test, and Labrix. I added Alcat and Labrix micronutrient test when I moved to San Diego because I was like I said I was grasping for just what else can I do. You know, I need I need to maybe offer um, offer something different and start advertising that. But I, all in all, I still you know fall back on my hormone saliva test. That's what I know best. Well, I you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna just jump back here for a minute to your um, YouTube channel because uh, you know I've watched you for for years now and and the videos that you put out and you're, you're really good online. Um, you know, did you do anything to to get any training to um, uh, to do these videos or how you present to yourself because you're you're quite at ease and quite natural with it. Um, you know, I, when I when I um, went to undergraduate school, my my degree was in theater arts, so uh -huh. I always felt okay in front of people. But uh -huh. I think the key to remember is if you feel confident of your topic, you're going to come across as very knowledgeable and. Um, you're going to look good as long as you know your topic. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is, you know, uh, somebody asks you something out of the blue that you don't have an answer to. And that has happened to me on radio. Um, so you just have to, you know, say that's something I'm not familiar with. You know, maybe I can look into that for you. Sure. Um, but yeah. And, and yeah, actually, that's it, the right answer. Always be honest. Don't fake it. <laughs> it's not yeah, good yeah. to fake it. It's better to say, it's not my area of expertise, but yeah, so I'm a good researcher. I'll look it up. Exactly. And then um, we were talking about expanding, like uh, we talked about Skype and FaceTime. And these are two new things that I'm looking into, so they're still very new to me. Like I'm always exploring new things, but this this uh, company called Instant, I think it's, I think it's supposed to be Instant uh, Go, um, is a pay per minute email or text question. So people will download the app if they want advice on, you know, maybe nutrition, they can look up, uh, maybe they need legal advice. They pay like $2 for a text or $2 for a quick email with you. It's, it's they can put a widget on your website. Um, I, I'm just really, this is as of 
a week and a half ago that I'm researching this and then HealthLink as well. Um, that's a site for healthcare professionals to be listed and where the public can find health and fitness businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if we have this, if we have this webinar next year, these might not be on my, my radar anymore, but okay. they are new and that wraps us up. Okay, great. Thank you very much for this um, sharing and uh, you know your relocation um, adventure here. It's it, it's always interesting going from one place to another and and what the differences are and the challenges and the and the new opportunities. So um, one of the questions that are in is um, is have do you still see it very different in San Diego than than New York in terms of booking? Um, filling up your appointments schedule and were you was it easier for you in LA than San Diego? Uh, it was easier for me in LA than San Diego. Th there's a lot more competition here okay. and Where I was in my little town of Santa Clarita. I was the only nutritionist in the valley uh -huh. So you were the go-to person I was I was the, if you if you google Santa Clarita nutritionist my Yelp page is at the top and, and yeah and I, I you have scads of really great um, testimonials from your um, LA clients all over your materials so that people can see the benefits of working with you um, I have posted my um, my testimonials on my website mm -hmm. um, is that what you mean or do you mean do I have handouts that I give people no no yeah if they're posted online if people have access to seeing who you've worked with and the kind of results they got. Yes, yeah, so I try to make sure that um, I, I have reviews on both the Yelp pages as well as reposting those on my website. Okay, good, good, good for you. And um, do 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 you are you working full time now? Um, this is the only thing I'm doing, as in this is my full time job, but. Yes. Um, it, it, it comes in waves, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's still not up to where I was in, in Los Angeles, even after three years. Huh. Well, we wish you the best for filling up that schedule in, in a very calm way. And um, yeah, I look forward to hearing more of how your business expands because I, I'm just thrilled. You know, I want to just circle back here and close up on um, you being able to work with Dr. Joe Collins and what a great opportunity for you that was. What a great guy and what a great mentor. Uh, you know, he really guided you through the entire process and was there um, for you for any kind of questions and perhaps maybe even still is even though he's retired now. Oh, but absolutely. It, you know, it's, yeah, it's a niche for you and, and a fabulous one where just, you know, you have so many women that are menopausal age and, and, and hormone swings of all ages. So I hope you help them all. <laughs> Thank you very much. And yes, I still am in contact with him. All right, great. Well, it's really been a pleasure to talk with you, Karen, and I hope that you'll visit us again at Hawthorne and, and continue to share the good work that you do. Thank you very much, Paula. All right. Yeah, this is wonderful. Okay, everybody, I want you to um, please help me spread the word for our next All About Alumni and meet here again. Uh, we'll be back Wednesday, July 5th, and we'll be live with Celia Penny Moses Nagbuku, and she's a holistic health and nutrition educator geneticist um, whose work environment in Nigeria is so very different from that of people in the United States. Um, Celia Penny is going to be talking with us from Nigeria. It'll be a completely different time zone for her, but I'm just so thrilled for this because we're stepping out into international territories here and the work that she's doing is just a brilliant piece that she's put together. So I'm excited for that and um, until then, I hope you all take good care of yourselves and each other, and I appreciate you being here and showing up again next time. Let people know about all about, about alumni and the good work our graduates are doing. All right, everybody, take good care. Appreciate it. Bye for now.